All right. Greetings, superior people. This is Winnie the Superb, and I am going to show you how I make my toothpaste powder. That's right, toothpaste is for the teeth. So here is the little container here. This is what I've been using to put my powder in, and it still has some leftover residue from last time. So I am actually going to be upgrading from this plastic container to the glass jar that's sitting here. So it's not going to completely fill up the, um, the jar, but I'm going to use this now instead of the plastic container. So let's move on. Um, I've got some items here. I'm going to run you through what they are, and then I will start the process. So as you see, I have the jar. And then, of course, we have the pestle and mortar, of course. And um, I use peppermint oil, essential oil, and clove essential oil. Those are going to be added last, so I'm going to put those aside. And then uh, I have some tools here. There's a small funnel, plastic funnel. I have a wooden spoon, a small plastic spoon, and then some measuring spoons here. This is a, a tablespoon and a quarter of a teaspoon. And then here is the spoon that I use sometimes if the stuff gets caught on the bottom of the, the bowl, the pesto mortar bowl there. I just scrape that out with that. So the main ingredients that I have here I'm going to be using is uh, some Himalayan salt. It's already fine ground, but I'm, or granules, but I'm going to actually be grinding it up a little bit more finer. This is actually a piece of charcoal from my own fire. And I have coral calcium. There's also baking soda, of course. And then we have the bentonite clay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind each of these up, starting with the salt. Like I said, I'm not going to be using all of this, but um, the idea here is to grind it up what you need and then of course if there's any I don't need left over for the powder I can always use it for my own personal use and my dietary needs so and it doesn't have to be completely finely ground up I just want it to be a little bit more ground up than what it already is. So, see it's not much, didn't change much of a difference there. So, I could continue to do this. Until it's all finely ground up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it right back into the little container because this is going to be not precise measurements because I'm changing the size of the container. And I do have a recipe that I had been using prior to this. so. Instead of using the recipe, I'm just going to adjust it to the size of my jar. Okay, so that's the salt. So now I'm only going to need to grind up the chunk of coal here. <laughs> and you can get your own, you can get the uh, charcoal pre-activated. Pre but I like to get my own charcoal from my own fire because I'm all about knowing where it comes from. So, and that didn't take very long to grind up. And part of the research with all this is that, see there it's all nice and powdered, is that you get to do your own research and figure out what exactly you would like to use as far as your activated charcoal source. So I like to use my own charcoal because, like I said, I know where it comes from. So let's go ahead. There's a little bit more salt still left in there. And 
put the charcoal back into this container. And like I said, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to need to measure out how much I'm using. Now, more than likely, I'll probably end up using all of the charcoal. Okay, so now I've got that done. I can move this out of the way because I'm not going to need to grind anything else. So I've got the jar here. And the original recipe actually called for um, called for using with the liquid. So when I originally did this, I used to do that, and then I decided to change it because it would go rancid because I didn't keep it refrigerated. So you can make this ahead of time and add the, your water to it, your filtered or alkalized water to it, um, and then be sure just keep it out, um, refrigerated. But I'm going to do mine. That's why it's now a toothpaste powder instead of toothpaste. Um, so I'm just going to view over my recipe here and the largest amount in the recipe is actually the bentonite clay so I'm going to add that in here and this is about a, a two ounces of powder and I'll probably adjust it later and then we have the baking soda which is not going to be the proportionately the same amount as the um, the bentonite so I'm actually going to scoop some of that out into the measurement. So that's about half the percentage. And like I said, I'll probably adjust this afterwards and um, put more of the bentonite so that it's more proportionate to my taste. Okay, so we got the baking soda. And now the coral calcium, you want to use a smaller amount because this is very, it's for the abrasiveness in the teeth and you don't want it to be too abrasive. So I'm only going to use a quarter of a teaspoon there. And then, like I said, with the charcoal, I'm actually going to add all of that because that's a main ingredient. And then we have the Himalayan salt, which also you do not want too much of this either because then it'll be really salty. So... I'm only going to use about a half a teaspoon. So that's pretty much it. And then um, you can always adjust your ingredients after you mix them up. Now we have, like I said, we have the clove and the peppermint. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix this up here so that I get all of these ingredients together. And there is somewhat a science to it. Okay, let me put the lid on. And I got that. And then I'm just going to kind of shake it around. And that helps blend it up a little bit more. There is a little bit of a science, like I was saying, to it. And uh, you obviously don't want too much of the coral calcium because I said that's for the abrasiveness. So you can adjust your recipe to fit your taste. And then the... Uh, salt. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to take a little bit out and just taste it. Well, that's not too salty. That's pretty good there. Good consistency. So that was a good consistency as far as everything goes. Now, with the, uh, the essential oils, because they're liquids, what I will do is I'll put the liquid in and then over time, these will actually um, become dry <laughs> and then it'll you can remix this powder and then it'll spread around so I'm going to put um, the original recipe calls for about um, about a half of a teaspoon so I'm going to put it because clove is really strong so I'm just going to put a few drops of clove okay three drops there and then the peppermint, I want more of the peppermint flavor, so I'm going to put about five or six of peppermint. And I was moving around because I was actually got about seven drops. I was moving around because I wanted to get them spread around so that they don't sit in clumps. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go back into this later 
after I give it some time to dry out and uh, taste it again. So that's pretty much it. The, uh, the powder is made. You um, let that sit. And like I said, go back and mix it. And if it's the flavoring is too strong for you, you can always um, add more of the bentonite or you can add more of the baking soda. And um, that's pretty much it. The toothpaste powder is ready to go.